welcome to the video. Not sure how this video is going to come together, but I figured might as well have a little bit of a chit chat while I'm prepping my orchids to come inside. I think that tonight is the last night for, let's say, 80% of my collection to be glam camping. I've taken some of the hot growers that I want to make sure that I don't chill tomorrow. I'm already gonna bring them inside today. That means my workload tomorrow won't be as heavy, I would say, or as long-winded. Because one thing that happens is, despite the fact I like to play with my orchids, I don't like that they're going inside. So my patience, my ADD will maybe kick in as I get bored with doing what I'm doing. If I do it for too long and start to cut corners and, well, if I take some inside today, then it won't be so bad tomorrow. Of course, it's kind of a conundrum because I'm still going to have a nice day tomorrow. The temperatures are only dropping to 10 degrees tomorrow night. But I won't be bringing orchids in and out tomorrow to then do what I'm doing now, which is, again, wiping down the leaves where I can, spray garlic alcohol at the base and around the leaves, the structures. Something I started doing in September, which was a bit silly. <laughs> I got a bit ahead of myself there. I always worry when, it, when we leave August, I always worry that uh, something can happen very, very quickly and I need to respond quickly. That is why I kind of start with pest treatment, uh, indoor prep, pretty much mid-September. So now what I'm actually doing is repeating myself, doing what I did a while ago uh, again, which actually is not that big a deal because my garlic alcohol has an efficacy of about two months, maybe more. So in a way, I have to do this anyway. They should be okay. I have noticed some scale on my Rapiculus Lelias, which <laughs> for real, I would like to say they came out of nowhere, but that is also interpretation of I wasn't watching them close enough. Looking at them from the surface every morning, you think you've got everything under control. No, you do not. Because the other day I looked at them from the back as in behind the leaves and oh my goodness it was not a pretty sight it actually gave me goosebumps and even now as i think about it it's like oh <laughs> i was shocked because they're pretty resilient but still that many it was all the crawler stage thank goodness and i checked them again over this morning i found some that looked a little bit more resilient in the crawler stage so took care of that and because we had a lot of rain the other day I've already taken the Rapiculus Lelius out of their mask. So I've dealt with my Cattleya Durigan. She's a little bit of a scale magnet as well. I've dealt with my Lelia Perinii. She is in active growth, so she has had some calcium magnesium before she goes inside. And with my Chunya Good Life as well. Not in active growth, no sign of root growth. And I think this morning I put just water into the reservoir. Let me just double check. Yeah, that's just water. All right, these are good to go. I'm gonna take them inside. I'll show you what the status quo is of the inside right now. And we'll find some more that we can deal with. And as I was carrying Chunya indoors, <clears throat> I don't like it. They may be dead, they look white, that also for me is always a signal they're alive, but crawlers will look white even if they're dead. No harm, no foul to give that just another little bit of a spritz. Now she can go inside. Right, pastoral innocence is next. The ones that I'm not putting inside today are the ones that are in bud. Oh goodness, I have happy holiday in bud, Chunya green in bud, not the mailman, the regular Chunya green, two buds, and I've already lost the buds to Frances Fox, which I now have on the table because she's going to come inside. Yeah, we lost the race against time, temperatures, etc. with the Frances Fox. No blooms for Frances Fox in 2022 that I consider worthwhile because 
We did have blooms at the beginning of the season, but they were pale, lackluster. They didn't really have anything France foxy about them. <laughs> they were, yeah, nothing really to write home about. And I was hoping to see a comparison on the Francis Fox to see if my Francis Fox is struggling because she has got Fusarium, whether we are keeping that Fusarium under control or if she is just, uh, didn't bloom nicely because of the lack of light during the winter and spring. But I can't do that comparison this time around, unfortunately. Never mind. Let me show her to you when I'm done with pastoral innocence here. There she is, gorgeous spike. And the first bud blasted when it was much, much smaller. And I thought, well, maybe we will find with one bloom how she is faring and coping. Based on her root system, I think she's managing. This would be the second flush of roots before she starts pushing out new growths. So I'm not concerned about the root system because we have a proper root system in the pot, better than ever. And I can see that her two eyes are starting to swell. Depends now which one she chooses to perform, progress and grow for us during the winter months. So we'll have to wait and see. If she is going to bloom for us again in uh, March, then we'll probably have pale blooms again. And the cycle will repeat itself. <laughs> All depends, of course, how the winter goes. Lots of light, we'll be fine. Cloudy and rainy, we'll have a growth, which will serve as a storage organ, which is fabulous, and will produce roots, which will strengthen the orchid. So that is how I'm going about my collection coming this winter and spring. If you're going to grow, you're going to grow at least, if not as the same size growth as previously during the great temperatures, but you're going to at least be a structure that is like a storage organ and produce roots. Either way, even though blooms may not come, I am winning. As long as the orchid stays alive, I am winning. So we'll give her a good miss down. Now it is important when it comes to Cattleya, Cattleya types, the entire Cattleya alliance, if you're gonna be messing with the underside of the leaves, do that during the day because they open their stomata at night and you don't wanna be blocking, messing around with the stomata when they're open and breathing. Siamese doll kiwi, I had some nice blooms up from her earlier in the season. And I thought she would just, you know, go straight into active growth again, but no, nope, got nothing out of her for the rest of the year. That was it. Just poof and stopped. Don't know what's up with her. She's not a pretty looking orchid when she's out of bloom. There's some cold damage I can already see. I've left her outside. One night went down to 14 degrees. I didn't think much of it. Siamese doll kiwi. Didn't like that at all. Whoa. Look at those whitey things, madam, madam. I just added some insecticidal soap into my water as I clean them. So I'm not actually thinking that if I do touch some scale on one orchid, when I wipe down the next one, I'll be transmitting scale. And insecticidal soap should do some protection there for me. Okay, ready. Let's check the underside of the leaves. And what I do there is go down, way down, bend over, and look under the leaves. Even though I spritz anyway with alcohol, it doesn't hurt to have a look and see if there's something happening that shouldn't be there. Okay, those three are ready to go in. And we're back with pastoral innocence. I'm telling you, my winter shuffle flow hasn't quite kicked in yet. Little bit of calcium and magnesium. She is not in active growth, but there's an eye swelling at the base. So if she thinks she's going to start off straight away to start a new growth, then calcium and magnesium. And if she slows that down, I'll go back to plain water. And we're back with pastoral innocence again. <laughs> 
because I put it up on the shelf and I saw all this. Now, the other day I went around and treated all of them from the underside. So I'm just thinking that is already the dead bodies of the scale, the crawlers, etc. Thinking is not knowing. So I was about to put her up on the shelf and I was like, what are you doing there? Okay, now we know they're gone. Lucky I was putting her on the top shelf, otherwise I would have missed that. No sign of anything on my Zagarik Wax African Beauty. And I think what I'm going to do after wiping, you can hear that in the background? After wiping her down, we'll go inside. We'll talk about my plans for the indoors. There's something going on at the other side of the hedge. I can't control, sounds like workers, I don't know. And I doubt that clanging and that banging I can edit out. So I'm not gonna be rushed by talking you through things, about things. We'll go inside, I've got something gorgeous to show you. But let's deal with African beauty. Look, her name fits her blooms. She is not an African beauty because she looks like a super duper plant. <laughs> Forgive me. She is definitely not. She is really struggling with the conditions that I have. Let's say the lack thereof. I don't have what she requires at the moment. So we're both holding on for dear life. And I hope that we both come through in survival mode, having survived everything. This is just plain RO water now. She is not in active growth. I love the sound of the gargling because everything's okay in the pot. I'll just make sure that that's not too much, but not too little either. Okay, I'll take her in and I'll bring you along when I've set up the camera indoors. Well, they've quieted down. I'm just gonna do mailman as well before I forget him and talk to you about my first shuffle casualty. <laughs> As you do, I was working in my blooming alley this morning to see who needs what when, already doing a pre-prep, not wiping leaves, but they've got their reservoirs with everything that they need and checking the leaves and everything for scale. I also need to buy more alcohol, you know, all that fun stuff. Well, I went to grab my Guarachea Black Comet and I guess her leaf got caught and I pulled the entire orchid out of the pot. <sighs> Thank goodness. The orchid and the pot are fine. The root system looks amazing. <laughs> we, at least we can do an update on the root system for my Guarachea. But yeah, oh, I just thought, no, this is not a good start. Maybe it was too early in the morning, who knows? But I thought, you see, you see, that's why, leave your orchids alone. That's not me telling you what to do. I'm just saying, for me, leave, when I can just leave my orchids on the shelf, nothing happens. So the reason I'm just spraying with a bit of plain RO water is because of the nice, fresh, new velamen down there, which, well, you could see it, but let's, you see that? Oh, gorgeous. And because I'm gonna spray the underside with the garlic alcohol, if any of the fumes were to land on that, I don't want that. Don't wanna burn that velamen, seeing as this one is already giving me quite the head scratch, brain scratch, as to why I can't get it to bloom. Uh, would be now four years in a row that it had bud blast during the months of the year where conditions are favorable. I don't know. Next year, we're going to be packing in calcium nitrate and a lot more magnesium, and we shall see. Clearly, magnesium. Right. So in here, I should have plain RO water. Oh, she's hard to get out. There we go. Yep, plain RO water. Okay. Oh, one more thing for future reference, just in case something were to happen. The pseudobulb back here is desiccating, but I think it's just desiccating due to age. I'm not going to interfere. I'm not going to be cutting it off with cinnamon down there or anything. It's, it's soft, but from the standpoint of it's losing its juices, not because it's rot. So that is my current assessment, but I'll be looking out for that. Just point that out in case I need to update you should something untoward happen. This is what I wanted to show you. Ha <laughs> ha, look at this. Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. 
busting some moves after being divided into three pieces, after the pseudobulbs didn't exactly recover the way I had hoped, even growing a massive new growth. Hello, Romeo's Nube to the left. Look at that, we're losing leaves fast right now, but I was not expecting to get blooms and these spikes are <laughs> so long already. Look, I've made a teepee. <laughs> I do believe we're going to see some Fred Clark Liara after dark black pearl blooms. Yeah, probably not all the way to Christmas, but soon enough. So just thought I'd let you know what's lurking in this area already. And they are going really fast. This is what has surprised me. How beautifully that new bulb grew. Amazing. But to see these two spikes, I haven't trained them. They're doing their own thing. They're finding their own way. It would just be awesome if it, everything went well because mm, yum, yum, yum. Check this happy sap out. Sorry to all the headphone wearers. That is Siliano in the background. Which brings me to a point. No, let's look at what I'm trying to achieve here. So top shelf, what I'm trying to do is get big pots, medium sized pots, big pots. I'm staggering the pot sizes because it is a real Tetris game. It's a puzzle. So the medium pot will give me a few centimeters, not much, but a little bit more space if I stagger them in their pot size, alternating their pot size as opposed to, you know, one big pot next to each other. For now, the big fowls are still here, but that's only because I'm not bringing everybody inside just yet, so they can spend another day there. I've already moved the summer bloomers into their shelf, the location. You can see them peeking through over there. And I've already dropped the paphiopetalums down into the lower shelf over there. So we're kind of ready to go. <laughs> Not really. Yeah, my motivation isn't that high. However, if you would like to stick around, let me talk to you about the lives, the recent lives. Now that we're in here and things are a little bit more quiet, maybe I can bring up something that is in bloom. But I did want to talk about the lives that are going to be happening quite often. When I cannot film, there will be lives. If you don't think there is a new video posted, please check on the main page of my channel where you see all the videos, the playlists and everything, and look towards your right you will see live. And that is where you will find all the live videos as they come. YouTube has separated that out. So if you don't see a new video posted and think I haven't posted a new video, I actually have. It's just that it's under the live category. And there you can watch the lives back on a replay, for example. Leave your comments as with any other video in the comments section if you couldn't make it to a live but you have some questions based on what we discussed. Even if you don't have any questions but you have some suggestions and you want to join in on the next one, you don't know how, etc. A live stream, once it's posted, behaves just like an ordinary video. Now I do not want to sound presumptuous and that is why I'm telling you all this because it may be that not everybody knows how all this works and I again apologize for Siliano in the background. But because I might have rainy days, I'm hoping that it's not that many but you know nature needs the rain as well, not just me wishing that I don't have terrible conditions. I'm going to be doing lives probably every night and I have staggered the hours because I want to reach everybody no matter the time zone. The first live, in my opinion, went pretty well, but you know, that is my opinion. I had a good laugh and we're going to continue that and we're going to expand on the concept as much as possible because I would like to have subscribers participate, come up, ask their questions and show their orchids. Something that I didn't exactly say on my first live, but that is all part and parcel. It's all inclusive. It is not about me with a channel talking to you or somebody else with another channel talking to you. It's about you coming onto the panel, joining in the conversation with your orchids. And again, it doesn't have to be a problem orchid. Know that if you have a bloom to show, if you want to show something that you're super proud of, then bring it on and come up onto the panel and show it. If you have nothing to show, but you just want to have a talk about something that you're experiencing in your collection, then come on the panel and we'll talk about it. That for me is super important and I didn't get around to mentioning that in the first live. I want this to be subscriber orientated. You don't have to have a channel and be doing videos. If you have an orchid collection of two Phalaenopsis, you want to talk about them, 
you are just as much invited up on the panel to talk about your phalaenopsis as anybody else. So please know that this is not about another channel talking with another channel. This is more about broadening the conversation to all of you that watch videos. And I would love to see you around. And if you have any further questions beyond that, of course, ask away in the comments of this video or any other video after you've watched this video. There are always other videos to watch on my channel and I hope that you take advantage of them. But before I love and leave you and continue on with my chores, check this out. Oh, this is Demofocus Low EI. Isn't that pretty? I may need to remove some lecker just to make sure that it knows where I want it to go. Down. Like a good root that you are. Go down. Let's get this piece of lecker out of the way as well. And watch where that piece of lecker just went. <laughs> there we go. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a bit haphazard. I'm going to try and organize myself in such a way that I don't do haphazard videos where I need to constantly apologize for being haphazard. However, this is what I'm up against at this point in time. I am excited about doing the live stream with you guys and I hope that we get to hear many, many of your voices, literally, not just in the comments, but voices, you know? Let's talk, let's have some fun. Let's enjoy the winter. Those of us that are in winter, let's enjoy it. During the cold, dark evenings or even early morning, we can have coffee chats. Coffee chat and orchids, how about that? Ah, the potential is endless. All we need to do is just get together and get on with it. Appreciate you watching. Have a beautiful day on one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.